Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to go into the word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a new day. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a new day to, to trample upon scorpions and serpents. It's a new day. You know what? You know, the level of your trial determines the level of your power in prayer, honestly. Because if you're comfortable, you don't know pain, you won't pray with such fervency. But when you've been through, when you've been through the furnace of affliction, <laughs> you will know how to resist the devil and fight back. You are stronger than what you think you are. That is what Joshua told the children of Israel. He spoke to the children of Joseph. You are greater than what you think you are. And that is what you are this morning. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And they're not just ordinary words because the other trick of the enemy, Church of New Destiny, good morning, everybody. The other trick of the enemy is because you hear the word so often, all the time, he will make you think, well, it's the same old thing, isn't it? You heard it yesterday, didn't you? Oh, you only heard it last week, it was a big deal. Honestly, don't listen to him, he's a liar. He's a fool. You know, what you need to do is to hold on to every word, chew it, regurgitate, regurgitate it like the cow. Take it in, eat it, bring it back out, and chew on it again, and meditate, and re-meditate on the word, because God's word never fails. God's word never fails. My word is temporary, but God's word is eternal and forever. Amen. So whatever God has spoken concerning you, it shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I want to make affirmations this morning. That's what I'm speaking about, you know, just making your affirmations. And I want you to come with me, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. So I'm just putting a pause on my series of uh, what I've been speaking about uh, in, in recent weeks. God has been dealing with us, dealing with our garments that needs cleansing. He's been dealing with uncleanliness in the body of Christ. But today, this is what I feel impressed on my heart that God wants me to bring. Praise the Lord from Psalm 46. And uh, the Bible says, um, Pastor Lade is my refuge and strength. I want you to see it. <laughs> is that what it says? Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> Pastor Lade can never be a place of refuge and strength. Because she needs a place of refuge and strength herself. Where you're going to draw your strength is where Pastor Lade will draw her strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the Bible says that God is our refuge and our strength. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please bear with me. God is our refuge. I mean, that statement alone, thank you, Lord Jesus, that statement alone, alone means a lot. You have to think about it. Who can be my refuge? Who can help me? Who is out there that can, your husband? Is it your husband that can help you? And so I'm titling it, God is our refuge, as simple as that. God is our refuge. The world is going into so much chaos so much unexpected disasters that we've never heard of before and we have to have a place of refuge in these last days and i'm thanking god every day that lord thank you that you died for me thank you that i can find somewhere to run to the bible says that the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into him and they are safe praise the lord you the righteous have a place to run to when you hear bad news, run into Jesus. When problems come your way, run into Jesus. He's your high tower. He's my high tower. He's our place of refuge. Praise the Lord. The Bible says God is our refuge and our strength. Amen. Before you can know that somebody is your refuge, you have to know that you have no cover over your head. You are open to attacks. And the world is open to attacks right now. Anything can happen anytime. We need a place of refuge. Praise the Lord. God is our refuge and strength. So what is that saying? God is my alpha, your alpha and your omega. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
He's our refuge and our strength. God is the bread of life. He's our beginning and our end. When you start your day, you start with him. At the end of your day, you close with him. Although he's not sleeping, you are sleeping and slumbering. But he who neither sleeps nor slumbers is your refuge and your strength. Whilst you are sleeping, he has kept you from death. He has kept you from sicknesses. He has kept you from demonic attacks. He has kept you from nightmares that you are not even aware of. How many times do we feel oppressed in this in sleep, in a dream? And God, our refuge and our strength comes there to come and deliver us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is the Bam of Gilead, the captain of our salvation. When we need healing, God, our refuge, comes to restore us into health. He saves us. Our refuge comes to heal us. Amen. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the ancient of days, the creator of all things. Our refuge and our strength is so much, so much more, so big, so mighty. Praise the Lord. He's the crown of glory, the friend who sticks closer than a brother. You can be waiting for your brother's call and you will not get it, but you always, always see that God is available. When you call on him, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, shall be saved. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's always available, our refuge and our strength. He is that person that will run into. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's our everlasting father our everlasting father the god of the whole earth thank you lord jesus the god of the whole earth today what what are, what are, what are, what what is it that is presenting itself as a problem you have a place of refuge and not only a place of refuge you don't go there just to cover yourself just to be covered but he actually strengthens you there in that place of refuge strength is available power is available Praise the Lord. Angels are available. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So do you need help with anything? His name is Ebenezer. The Lord, our helper, is a helper. You run into him, our Ebenezer. Praise the Lord. He's the stone of help. Do you need healing? Call on Jehovah Rapha, our refuge. Jehovah Rapha is our refuge, our healer. When you get under his shadow, you become healed straight away. You're just healed. Problems just fly away. How many times have you worshipped and you forgot about your problems? In fact, sometimes you can't even remember when you got healed. You've been asking God for healing about a certain thing. And one day you just discover that thing is no longer there. You can't even remember the day it left. Because Jehovah, your refuge, you're under his shadow. And he took that sickness away. He takes headaches away. He takes problems away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you need wisdom? Do you need wisdom? He, the Bible says he's the only wise God. The only wise God. I need wisdom all the time. I need wisdom to lead people. I need wisdom to, 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 lead, to, to, to be in my family as a mother and a wife. I need financial wisdom. I need wisdom in business. I need wisdom in so many things that I do. I need the wisdom of God. Uh, that he's the only wise God. Praise the Lord. And he is our refuge and our strength. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you need a provision? He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Praise the Lord. Do you need anything right now? What do you need? The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah will provide. Our refuge will provide. Just run into him, run away from poverty and go under the shadow of the Almighty. Jehovah Jireh is waiting. He is waiting for us. Praise the Lord. You know, I told you before and I'll repeat it again. I always say to Jesus, Jesus, come and raise me. <laughs> so instead of going to someone else out there, I'll say, Lord, raise me, raise me. Praise the Lord. I need you to just give me a few, a few kaching, a few, a few dollars, you know. And before you know it, guess what? God blesses me. Hallelujah. Because it's my Jehovah Jireh. My provider provides for me. So I don't need to go back in because you don't need to. David said, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed beg for bread you are not forsaken he is your jehovah jireh he is your provider he is everything that we need do you need food on your table myself and my husband were saying the other day isn't it funny when food is going down suddenly the food in our home just rises like that god just makes provision glory be to god hallelujah we've known and we continue to know him as our jehovah jireh 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, do you need comfort? Call on the God of comfort. When you're grieving about a situation, grieving for a loved one who has passed away, or even grieving a particular situation, God, your comforter, your refuge is there. And he's not only our comforter, but he's also our strength. You know, you need. Com we all need comfort. You know, the children can be naughty, you know, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, you know, these children, oh my Lord. And the Lord will start comforting you that don't worry, they're mine as well. Are they your children? They were mine before I gave them to you. Don't forget, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you say the Bible. So I know I've already known your son, your daughter, before you had him or had her. So I am still available. I have brought that child as a gift to you in this world, and I will perfect everything that concerns that child. Everything. All my plans and purposes will come to pass. So God will begin to comfort you that your child is not just your child. Your child is mine. You are mine. Your children are mine. Every child of yours is mine. Your grandchildren are mine. That's why we sing that blessing. Amen. Amen. May your children and your generation to generation be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. May his favor be upon you in Jesus name. Amen. And so are you in the battle? He is the mighty in battle. He is the mighty in battle, our refuge and our fortress. You know what I love about God being our refuge is that when battle arises, I can actually run into that place of refuge and leave God to fight my battle. <laughs> Glory be to God. So whoever my enemies are, they will meet God at the door because they can't chase me into that refuge. They cannot run into that refuge with you. They have no right to, the enemy has no right into that refuge. You are under the shadow of his wings. Praise the Lord. So you just imagine your yourself running into your father and the enemy is outside and God will open the door and say hello who's there there will be silence because he's gone far he can't take the glory glory be to God hallelujah glory be to God thank you Lord Jesus he is the mighty in battle and he will fight for you he is everything and anything that you need glory be to God hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus so what does the refuge mean what does it mean for God to be our refuge. He is our protection. That is what God is saying. The Bible says that God, look, I'm just on this verse alone right now. And you see how vast, how massive God is. God is our refuge and strength. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, God is our protection and shelter. That's what you're saying. When you say God is my refuge and strength, you're saying, God, you are my protection and my shelter. And then he says a very present help in trouble. We're still in verse one. We can't even leave verse one. A very present help in times of trouble, in trouble. Trust me, it's not a curse to get into trouble. It's not a curse that we will fall into trouble. We live in a fallen world and trouble troubles this world. And that trouble around the world comes to trouble us. But listen, God says, I will be with you a very present help in trouble as from danger. I will be very present in times of danger, in times of trouble, in times of hardship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was sharing how one day I was sleeping and the enemy appeared to me. Honestly. I could have died, but guess what I did? I ran into my place of refuge straight away, pleading the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. I began to speak what God gave me, run into the refuge, go into that place of refuge, refuge right now. And when you speak in tongues, demons are confused. They don't know what you're talking about. As you speak in tongues, the angels come down like the angels that came to fight for Daniel uh, against the prince of Persia. The angels will come. Uh, divine assistance will be re released to you. Hallelujah. In your time of danger and your time of hardship, you say, Father, you are my strength. You are my refuge. A very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Is a source of help. God says, I will bring you relief in that time. A very present 
Praise the Lord. As the trouble is stirring, God is the answer. God is bringing the answer right there and then. And guess what? The enemy just fizzled away. I saw in my imagination, in my spirit, I saw that this big loud voice and this entity just began to disappear and began to disappear as I affirmed and I stood on the word and I spoke in tongues and I released the glory and the fire of God against them. They fizzled away until it was like ashes and nothing like a dot. Ah, hallelujah. And I was thanking God that God, thank you that I've not been given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you have a sound mind, you will not listen to that liar. You will not listen to his voice. You will run into your place of refuge, your, your help, your relief, your comfort in times of trouble. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give God praise this morning. Glory be to God. If you are not troubled, you cannot be stronger. Trust me. I've been through so much so much that i can't if i wrote a book i will i will write many books but i give glory to god <laughs> that he's the he's the refuge and our fortress thank you lord jesus when that car hit my husband and he had that great accident he was a refuge and a fortress that he did not die i remember putting my hand on the pillow and say father thank you that i'm not a widow it's not the first time he's done it he did it twice fatal accidents that god delivered him from and God gave him a nice parting, like a haircut. So this car, it's like the Baba just put a, a, a cut there. So I don't even notice that it's his car because the Babas, you know, they cut you a parting there, you know, and it just looks like a parting. Nobody will know that that was an accident. That was something that was so bad that God turned around for good. All your troubles will be turned around for good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we laugh the last laugh in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I remember uh, my mom in blessed memory. I remember one day uh, she was going on the island in Lagos and uh, uh, a, a lorry or some car i think it's a lorry or a van just ran into her car the driver was driving her she was in the back seat and the car crunched like that the car just crunched she was meant to have died then she was meant to have died in that moment but god saved her life god saved her. in fact when i saw her i didn't even take it seriously she said you children don't understand that was what she said because i saw her whole you know we take our parents for granted we take our, our moms and our dads for granted she said you children don't understand she was traumatized you know bless her you know and god just saved her i thank the lord that god gave her length of days even after that glory be to god how many things have the lord saved us from we must give thanks we've been in the lion's den and god took the teeth of the lion away uh, they're trying to just uh, harass you is the enemy harassing you right now go into your place of refuge is he screaming against you are there many lions in your den don't worry about how many lions there are god has shut the mouth of the lions he has shut the mouth of the lions they cannot come against you you will come out of that den you will come out of that prison yeah because god has won the victory for you he is your refuge and your fortress is a very present help in times of trouble praise the lord let's go psalm 62 maybe you don't go there i'll just read it to you thank you lord jesus psalm 62 uh, psalm 62 verse 8 it says trust in him at all times you people pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us salah salah means just stay there stay there meditate on it meditate on it just breathe in and stay there trust in him trust in him at all times your place of refuge you have to trust him in the midst of that trouble trust him at all times you people pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us praise the lord hallelujah let me go to psalm 37 thank you jesus psalm 37 from verse 39 verses 39 to 40 but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Your salvation, your cover, your strength is from the Lord. He is the strength in the time of trouble. He is your strength in the time of trouble. And then verse 40, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from who? From the wicked and save them because they trust in him. You abiding in that refuge is dependent on your trust in God. If you don't trust God, you'll be very afraid. You'll be running up and down. 
But when you trust him, you will abide under that shadow. You will stay in that place of refuge. Don't worry about the loud noises. Don't worry about all of the lies of the enemy. You just be still, trust him and know that he is God. Amen. Amen. Psalm 62 verse 7, it says, In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Somebody needs to write that on their fridge. My refuge is in God. My refuge is in God. He's the rock of my strength. So you don't have the strength to run this race on earth by yourself. You don't have the strength to be in your job and work in that job by yourself. You can't. He has to be your rock of strength there. You can't run that business successfully if you God is not the rock of your strength. Your business is different to those ones out there because God is your senior partner. He is your strength. He is your shield. He is the one that teaches us. Amen. And my refuge is in God. Whatever you do in your job, there will be trouble. In your business, there will be trouble. But the only thing that you know is that God, the rock, is your strength in your business, in your job, in your marriage, in your home. He's the rock of your strength. And then you say to God, my refuge is in you. My refuge is in you. I run into you and I know that I am safe. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then Psalm 34, 22, it says, none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. None of you shall be condemned. Do you trust in the Lord? You shall not be condemned. There is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no condemnation for you. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The law that rules the world out there is not the law that is ruling us. We're under the law of life. Praise the Lord. The law of freedom. Yes, we have hope. We have strength. He's our rock, our strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. None of us who trust in him, he redeems the souls of his servants. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you trust in God, you will not be put out in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be condemned in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So what, what, is, what is that strength that God is talking about? You know, God is saying, I am your, uh, uh, you are my property. You, my brother, my sister, are God's property. So the strength of God is in you. He is holding you strong in the midst of trouble. Hallelujah. And, and he's the one that has the power to resist that attack. So Christ in you, the hope of glory. When trouble comes, remember that your place of refuge, Jesus Christ, is on the inside of you. You can resist the devil and he will flee from you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So in verse 2 of Psalm 46, I'm not sure I can finish this psalm today, you know, because it's huge. It's huge. The word of God. Praise the Lord. Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 46 verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear. The reason why you are not afraid is because God is in you. God is your strength. Praise the Lord. He's your place of refuge. He has the power that he has placed on the inside of you to resist that attack. He has impregnated you with his word. He has impregnated you with the Zoe life of God. You have the power. You have the power to resist the devil and he will flee from you. You have the power to resist the strain and the stress. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, you've got to resist the devil. When the devil tells you, you've got to move out of this house now because it's no good really. You know, he wants to stress you. He wants to frustrate you. You will come against that and say, I come against that frustration. I come against that stress in the name of Jesus. In your job, people will talk about you. They will backbite you. They will gossip about you. They will undermine you. They don't want to promote you. You will go to your refuge and you will say, Father, I resist the devil that tries to put me down in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will resist that strain, that stress. Because why? God is your strength. He is durable. Therefore, you are durable. He stands the test of time. You 
God will start the test of time in the name of Jesus. You are not a quitter. You are not a failure. Glory be to God. The devil is a failure. He failed. He failed. He was in the presence of God Almighty. He had the privilege that we didn't have. He had the presence of God right there face to face. He was ministering to the Lord. And God allowed him in his presence. God trusted him, but he betrayed the trust of God. And God kicked him out like, like lightning. He came down. Now he's dust underneath your feet. And you want to allow him to climb up from where he is down underneath your feet to come and sit with you on your table to be uh, 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 reasoning with you. How dare he? That is what David said. You, this uncircumcised uh, Philistine, how dare you come and challenge me? I know in whom I trust. Uh, God in whom uh, there is my, he's my refuge. Therefore, I will not fear. You will not be afraid of 10,000 that may come against you. Hallelujah. Even though the earth be removed, no matter what is happening, you are durable. You can resist that stress that comes against you on a weekly basis. When we finish church, the enemy is a liar. By tomorrow, he starts his business again. He knows he can't enter church with you. He knows he can't enter that fast with you. But the minute you finish your fasting, the devil arrives like he did with Jesus. But Jesus knew something that God is his refuge and his strength. Therefore, he was not afraid. He resisted the devil. He said, it is written, therefore we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the earth is quaking everywhere in the world, though we're hearing wars and rumors of war and be in trouble, though the mountains shake with the swelling, hallelujah, Jesus. Our God is our refuge and our strength. We don't have strength in our physical, but we have strength in the uh, 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 in the spiritual. And so we hold on to the hem of his garment. He is a refuge for us. Yeah, we have the power to resist that strain and that stress in the name of Jesus. We have the ability, yeah, to, 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 to maintain our, our, our position in Christ. You see, you've got to maintain your position in Christ. You've got to keep standing and not fail. Don't fail. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. He is the rock of our salvation. Amen. So you've got the capacity, you've got the potential, glory be to God, yes, Lord, uh, to be effective. Because we see what God does is that he comes to show you off. You see, he said to the devil, he said, have you not seen my servant Job? Have you not seen my servant Sandra? Have you not seen my servant Jen? Have you not seen these people? And God is boasting of you because he wants to manifest his power. And the devil said, well, yeah, I saw them, but you, I see a hedge around them. You know, you protect them too much, you know. I can't even touch them. You just give them to me. You know, they will curse you and they will die. You know, and the Lord said, no, not my Sandra. <laughs> not the one that I love so much. Not that one. Not that Jen. No, 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 no. You're not going to do that uh, uh, to Wura. So what, what happens is that God will begin to boast about you. He wants to show you off. Uh, 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 he wants to show off his strength in you. Hallelujah. And so when the devil comes, he takes this away. He will try and steal your job. He was trying to start, try and steal your wealth, your health. He will try. He did everything to Job. He did everything. Why is Job was still mourning about one thing. Something else has already happened. They brought him another bad news. Ha! Huh? God is saying, I will show my strength to Job. I will show, I will perform. I will do what I said I would do. And Job did not relent. You know, Job stood. Job confessed. His friends came and said, look, his wife came and said, curse God and die. You know how many people will come to you? Even your circumstances will be speaking to you. Curse God and die. Look, you've been in this story for too long. How many years will God take to release you, to bless you, yeah, to, to to help you, uh, to give you victory. Not knowing that you are already victorious because it's your place of refuge. He's only showing you off, hallelujah, to the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is very protective about us and he's very supportive of us. He's protective about us and supportive of us. Don't ever forget that he covers us. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 26. Psalm 73, verse 26. It says, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My flesh fail. That's when we start crying. The flesh is failing right there. 
My heart fails. My heart can't take it anymore. I've had enough now. But God, but, there's a but there. God is the strength. God, my refuge and my strength. The Bible says, but God is the strength of my heart. You want to know today that the heart that you have there is not your own. God has given you a new heart, a strong heart, a, a powerful heart. He's the strength of our hearts and our portion forever. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's our portion forever. The Bible says the Lord is the strength of his people. That battle with your family, you can't fight it on your own. He's your strength. That battle in your business, you cannot fight it in your marriage, in your family, whatever it is, your sister, your brother, only God will fight that battle for you. Only God will fight that battle for you because he's your strength. He's your portion forevermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 29, 11, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will give you strength. Ask for that strength this morning. Remember Samson? He lost his strength because of Delilah. Delilah is that situation that we go through today. Always looking for something to rob us of. Delilah robbed Samson of strength because Samson released a secret that he mustn't. Let me tell Christians something. It's not everything that you tell everybody. Don't tell everybody everything. And people will be persistent. How's your family? Before you know it, oh, my family is bad. Some of them don't have that faith. Because what you say, they will agree with you that, okay, okay, so you're, oh, okay, all right. They don't have that strength. It's only when you feel that release. Maybe that person is a true sister or a true brother that they will pray for you. It's only people who you know that will pray for you that you release those kind of things to. Because some will not pray. They will just agree with your negative confession right there. That it's true. Mm, your family is not... Uh, they won't say it, but their heart might say it. You don't know. The heart of man is desperately wicked. So let us watch what we give out. This was the fall of Samson. He held on at first, but before you knew it, this woman was so persistent, he lost his power. But the Bible says in Judges chapter 16, 28, Samson prayed for strength once more. Hallelujah. I may fall, but I will get up again. Glory be to God. I will get up again. You will get up again in Jesus' name. We, may, we might make a mistake, but we will come back. And Samson came back with strength. Glory be to God. He asked for strength just once more. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, David found strength in God. You see, David did not fight that battle by himself. A lot of people talk about David as if David fought Goliath by himself, as if he had that strength with five stones. It's impossible. It's impossible. Goliath will make a meat of David, will eat him up like that. But because David found strength in God, hallelujah, he was able to knock down Goliath. Listen, when your strength is in God, every Goliath will go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Goliath will go down. When you use the word of God, yeah, the, every Goliath will go down. They will die. Your Goliaths will die in the name of Jesus. Your Goliaths will die in the name of Jesus. All those uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistines, they will die. In the name of Jesus, because God is your refuge and your strength. In Jesus' name, a very present help in times of trouble. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.16, may you be strengthened through his spirit in the inner man. The inner man is where the strength of God goes into, in your inner man. When your inner man is strong, your outer man will obey. When my inner man is strong, my outer man will obey. If my inner man is not strong enough, my outer man will be afraid. So what we need to do is build our strength in God. Build up yourself in God. Yes, Lord. So, so Psalm 46 continues to talk about no matter what happens, even though the earth be removed, it doesn't matter. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, it doesn't matter. Though its waters roar and be troubled. All the troubles that come to you every week on a daily basis, it doesn't matter. Verse 4, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. 
You shall not be moved because God is in the midst of you. You will not be moved like a pregnant woman. You know that woman will carry her pregnancy everywhere. If a pregnant woman falls, she will get back up again. That baby is still intact. You will not be moved. Let your vision be intact. Let the word of God stand strong on the inside of you. Yes, yes. And meditate on the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep standing. No matter if the mountains be cast in the midst of the sea. You know, mountains being cast into the midst of the sea is a great disaster. No matter what goes on, you keep standing because God is in the midst of you. You shall not be moved. In Jesus' mighty name, the Bible says, God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Hallelujah. God is a helper. And so you will go to Philippians 4.13. And you'll fortify your inner man by saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because Psalm 46 is saying that God shall help her just at the break of dawn. God is my helper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can go through this. Do you know some people have lost loved ones and you see that they're still in the church. They're still worshiping God. How do you think they've survived it? It's because of the strength of the Lord. When my father died on a dentist table, it wasn't easy. He died at the dentist's. It was devastating for me. I thought, Lord, I'm not talking to you till the day I die. Since you knew about all these things and you didn't do nothing about it, I'm, I'm not talking to you. I was so grieved. I was so much in pain. You know, he went for a dentist appointment. They were going to do an operation. So it's not just a routine appointment. It was an operation that they were going to do on his lower teeth, you know. And uh, he never came out. How do you deal with that? How could I have survived it? How did I curse God and die? How, how was it that God sustained me driving all around North London with blinded eyes? I couldn't see because I'll be crying. I don't know where I'm driving to. I'm just driving. I was just driving. I would just drive anywhere and be crying everywhere. But God, my refuge and my strength, he comforted me. This is what I'm saying to you. He's our refuge. He's a very present help in times of trouble. Can you imagine that he, he sustained me to the place where I am now that I can be jumping? I'm going to stand and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. And that's why I'm saying that the depth of your trial determines the depth of your prayers. Because if I haven't been through, perhaps I may not understand some things, <laughs> but I've been through that furnace of affliction. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Nothing comes easy. Look at Paul the apostle. He went through a lot. Although he did bad things previously before he came to Christ, but he suffered a lot. He suffered a lot. I want you to understand that your there's purpose in your pain. God will help you at the break of dawn. There's purpose in that grieving. There's purpose in your pain. Some people don't even know who their mother is. At the age of three, their mother died. Somebody was telling me last week. She said, My mother died, my mother died 65 years ago. I said, wow. She said, I never knew my mother. It was my aunt that brought me up. And I tried to imagine myself not knowing my mother. I tried to put myself in that person's shoes. And I realized that it's only by the strength and the grace of God that we all stand. If I ask each one of you your stories, it will be what we were here today will be something. We'll, we will all be in tears that, wow, you mean you've been through that? You mean you've been through that? You mean you've been through that? God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. God will be holding your hands when you don't even know he's holding you. You can't even feel his presence, but he's holding you. Even right now, forget about the feelings. He is with you. He is for you. He is your refuge. He is your strength. And you know, I don't even know how I came out of that grieving. I can't tell you till today, this is how I came out of grieving for my dad. I can't remember. I can't remember. For my mom, I ran to, to the father. When my heart breaks, boom, my heart will just break like it's exploding. Then I run to the Lord, that Lord help me. You've got to help me, help me, help me, help me. I can cry for help 10 times. Whatever it takes, run to the Lord. Hold on to him. 
Maybe you've been through a divorce and people are looking at you like a divorcee. They've labeled you. Hold on to God, your refuge, your fortress. He will never label you. He loves you just the way you are. You're stronger than what you think you are. You are not condemned by God. None of his loved ones shall ever be condemned in Jesus' name. Perhaps you're still single. You're not married. You don't have a child. And people are asking you and keep asking you and keep being insensitive to you. Don't worry about them. The Lord, your refuge is with you. It doesn't matter. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. You're God's daughter. You're God's son. Maybe you've lost your job currently and you don't have a job and people keep asking you and they know that it's something you don't like, but they will keep asking you, you know, have you got a job? What job do you do? I'm this and I'm that, you know, I've been in those places before. I'm telling you, I've been long enough in the body of Christ to see some pain, some things that people do. You know, they will hold meetings that are supposed to be church meetings, uh, that is supposed to be a meeting for, for men. They will go there and, oh, what job do you do? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an architect, I'm this and I'm that. And, I'm the, and they're all boasting. And people come out of those meetings worse off than they went in there. They came out worse off because it's not about Christ. Nobody's talking about Jesus. They're talking about self and acquire, acquiring wealth and all of those things. Let me tell you, don't you ever feel condemned as a child of God. Don't allow anybody to condemn you. Whether you have little or you have much, it doesn't matter in the eyes of God. It's you that God is looking at. He's not looking at your car. He's not looking at your house. He's not looking at your possessions. He's looking at your heart. And he loves you just for who you are. He said, I will be there at the break of dawn. Uh, whilst you're sleeping, I will be there. Whilst you're awake, I will be there. I have given my angels charge over you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. I will be there at all times for you. I will beautify you in the house of my glory. You see, all those things that you're going through will come together and work together for good because from there you become a counselor. From there you become an encourager. From there you can tell your brother, your sister, you know, I used to have that, but God is able. God will carry you through. You will be an encourager. Whoever told me I would be a pastor, I'll tell them, don't curse me. If they told me I would be a pastor, I'll say, please just forget about, forget about all those things. Because I don't want to know. I don't want to go there. You mean I'm going to be standing in front of people? How many people am I going to be standing? One, two, three. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going into hiding. I went into hiding. But the fire of God snuffed me out of that cave. The fire of God brought me out. The fire of God strengthened me. The name of Jesus stood by me. He said, look, I will be your helper. I can help you. I will speak through you. All I need is your surrender. All I need is your vessel. That's all I need. All right? And when I use your vessel, you give me the glory. Hallelujah. So we became partners. Anytime God is speaking like this, I say, ah, I give you the glory. You did it again. Hallelujah. When people ask me how to do it, I say, Jesus does it because I don't even know how I do it. I can't tell you. There's no formula. It's Jesus I run to. Like this morning, last night, I said, Lord Jesus, what are you giving me? I looked through the Bible, right, left, side that front back. I looked everywhere. I said, Lord, I've read this, you know, but even sometimes to even sit down, you meditate and you're thinking on the word and then, you know, it's not what God wants. So what do you do? Are you going to force what God, God doesn't want on the people of God? No. You say, Lord Jesus, I surrender myself to you. He says, I said to you, I will come at the break of dawn. I will come at the break of dawn. And wonderfully enough, Jesus appears in the morning and says, Lady, I want you to go into that book and minister on Psalm 46 and minister on this. You rely totally on God, honestly. Holy Spirit, the best and faithful partner. Amen. He is. He is a partner and you must recognize him in everything that you do. Don't try and change anybody in your house. I'm begging you, please. Because all your words will just go down to the dustbin. Let God change them. Let God be your strength in that time of adversity. Let God do what he does best. He will make it good. Saul of Tarsus thought he was a great man persecuting Christians anyhow. Anyhow. He was getting them killed. They will go from house to house. When I think of what the Christians went through in those days, they went through a lot, actually. Because there was the time that the persecution was so much, everybody ran away. Everybody went into different places. But there was still ministry. It's just that times were hard for the Christians there. Are you feeling persecuted? God is your refuge and your place of strength this morning. A very present help in trouble. God is in the midst of you. You shall not be moved in Jesus' name.
God shall help you just at the break of dawn. The Bible says the nations raged, uh, uh, Psalm 46 verse 6, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. That is our God. He will utter his voice and the whole earth will melt. Praise the Lord. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. You see, when you say that, you've got to stop there. Don't just say it nonchalantly. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. Guess what will begin to happen? Strength begins to come in your inner man. If that is all you can say to the enemy, keep saying it. Say it from morning till night. Say it in the car. Say it when you are at work. Go to the toilet. Say it. Say it everywhere. The Lord of hosts is with me. Do you know what that means? The Lord of hosts. The host of heaven. The Lord of the hosts of eternity. The Lord of the hosts of the heavenly angels. The Lord of the hosts of the 24 witnesses. The Lord of hosts is with me. Jesus is with me. God is with me. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the angels of heaven, the 24 witnesses, Master Kalabakasheke, they are with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. Therefore, I will not be afraid. You will not be afraid. Praise the Lord. It says, come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He breaks the bow. The battle is not for you. Don't go and be breaking. He breaks the bow. So you come in the name of Jesus and the bow is broken. The arrow is broken in the name of Jesus. He cuts the spear in two. These are tools of the enemy, the arrow, the spear. Who is the target of these weapons? It's you and I. But their bows are broken by the Lord. He burns the chariot in the fire. The fire of God will consume all your enemies with all of their chariots. However many come against you, they will never be able to overtake you because the Lord of hosts is with you and the God of Jacob is your refuge. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, he burns the chariot. Do you know how long it takes to make a chariot in those days? They're made out of iron, all those big wheels. The only time I think of a chariot is when I used to see the late Queen Elizabeth and the uh, stuff that they, and that's not even a chariot. It's just a carriage. But it reminds me of days and days of old, how much time they would have put into carving that chariot. That's a lot of things coming against the children of God. Chariots are coming against you. Bows are coming against you. Arrows are coming against you. And the Lord is saying that I will break the bow and cut the spear in two. You just run into me and know that you are safe. And then verse 10 is one of my favorite uh, verses. Be still and know. Be still. Be still and know. Be still. Don't just be still. Be still knowing that I am God. So in the midst of your chaos, be still. When you get an email that will rile you, be still. When you get a letter, be still. I remember when I got that letter from Dark Charge. Two letters. So my bill was double. And my heart, when I was opening it, I was like, Oh Lord, oh Lord, I can tell that this is a bill, you know. I opened it, it was dark charge. I totally forgot to pay my bill. But then the Spirit of God just came, that stillness came, be still. Just be still. Don't panic now. When your son or your daughter brings in some kind of result or you hear some news, please be still, be still, be still. When you have a bad dream at night, be still. Wake up and take authority. Just be still in Christ. And know, you've got to have that knowing that God is in charge of this. God can take charge of this. God is in control of this. Therefore, I have no need to worry. I will be anxious for nothing. I will be anxious for nothing. I will be exalted among the nations. 
I will be exalted in the earth. God is boasting of his power, his strength, of who he is. You must know who your God is. The Bible says that those who know their God shall be strong. And they will do what? Mighty exploits. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Those who know that God shall be strong, they shall be strong. Be still. Only if you don't know God is when you flap, you know, when you're always anxious. Always anxious about everything. I'm questioning then, do you really know your God? Because those who know their God will be strong. They will be still and they will do mighty exploits. God is telling somebody this morning, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Make it your written. Make it your confession. Speak it as often as you can. Even when you are in the face of imminent trouble. Let me give you a testimony. I remember, I'm not sure if it's two or three years ago. It could be about three years or four years now because time has gone so fast. I was driving at the right speed limit. In fact, it was less than 30 miles an hour because I'm in a residential area at this particular point on that day. And I'm driving through a road where there's a primary school in my area, which was the primary school that my son uh, attended. And as I turned the corner from the main high road into that primary school road, the road, the girl jumps in front of my car. As she jumped in front of my car, she came out of her car not looking. She just came out of her car and jumped into the road. And there was not enough time for me to, as slow as my car was, there was nothing because the way she, 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 she did, it was so quick. It happened so fast. Before I knew it, her foot was underneath my tire. What do I do? I reversed back. She was ouching. Ouch! She was screaming. And I said, Lord, I need you right now. Help me, because the whole of the parents were all there. Everybody was out. So I came out of the car like a broken woman, but very still. Tears were coming out of my eyes, but I was still in my spirit asking God to help me. Lord, I need you, because these people can attack me, but it's her fault, it's not me, you know. So she was screaming. Everybody came around and I looked at her, I said, I'm so sorry. You know, the, the way she jumped and she was screaming, ah, you know. Anyway, her leg wasn't broken or anything like that. So then one of her sisters came out and called their mom. Their mom comes charging from home. They live locally. She comes in, how dare you go? And she started screaming and all of that. And the Holy Spirit just held me still. And I kept looking at the daughter. I said, I'm sorry. You know, are you okay? Is this that? And all of that. And so they said they'll take her to the hospital just to check over, which is okay. And I said, I'll come with you. And the mom said, no, 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 it's okay. And as the girl got in the car, she looked at me. And she said, it's not your fault. I jumped in front of your car. And she said it to her mother's hearing. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I cried because I know what the devil could set up. Could set me up right there. You know, and everything came rushing to me. And honestly, I'm not saying this to, to, to make us feel bad or anything. You see, when you are black, you have the extra layer of fear that could suddenly come because I'm the only black person in that area. So I'm already guilty before I'm even acquitted. And that is what happens. I warn my son, when you're walking down the street, you dress properly because you're guilty before you're proven that you're not guilty. If the police come, they will point at you. The police have been to my door before. They said, my son did this. Somebody mentioned my son's name. I said, that's not my son. He's not a criminal. That's not my son. God turned it around that we ended up praying for the policeman. So when you've got those kind of things, you're dealing with extra issues. 
mentally, really. And God just vindicated me. So the police came after a few days. They said it's a normal routine. They've been to the family and the family said, I haven't done anything. I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so they wrote me a letter later and they gave me freedom that the case is closed. I said, thank you, Jesus. The enemy can set you up, but God will come at the break of dawn. God will come at the break of dawn. God will come at the break of dawn. So you just got to be still. I could have been screaming. I could have misbehaved. I could have said, well, it's not that bad. Your leg is not broken. You know, why are you crying over? Do you know she was smiling when they were taking her? But God kept me still. Kept me still. Be still. When that situation arises at home that will make you angry and lose your temper, be still. Even though you may be in the right and it may seem like you, they're pointing fingers at you, be still and know that he is God. He will be exalted in that situation. He will lift up his name and glorify his name. He will glorify his name. Praise the Lord. And may the Lord continue to glorify his name in all our lives in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you this morning that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Don't feel condemned. Some people might say, oh, you're this, you're that. It's all right. God is still working in all of us. Nobody is perfect. I'm not. You are not. We're a work in progress. We're a work in progress. And we must love one another, even as Christ has loved us. I love you just for who you are. Sandra, we're the same. Sam, we're the same. We are the same. You're dealing with issues. I'm dealing with issues. God is perfecting that which concerns you. God is perfecting that which concerns me. People may talk about you or look at you. It's okay. It's all right. It's people talking. What is God saying? Whose report will you believe? We choose to believe the report of the Lord. Boomsy. You are special. That's how God has said it. It doesn't matter what they, what they say or what they take from me. Jehovah Jireh is with us. The Lord of hosts is our refuge. Praise the Lord. If I'm sitting down here thinking what they've said about Pastor Lady, I wouldn't be in this ministry. I'll be too sensitive, too fleshly to even be here. But it doesn't matter what they say. I'll ask the Lord, what are you saying? He says, I love you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love you. Say, so laugh at the enemy. Laugh at the enemy. Say, Father, thank you that you love me so much. You're holding me. Thank you, Jesus, for holding my heart together. I am being still and knowing that you are God. Thank you, Jesus. All your accusers will come back to honor you. God gave us that word many years ago. He said, those who have despised you will come back to honor you. They will come back to honor you. All your gaslighters will come back to honor you. Praise the Lord. You know, the enemy is a trickster. He will. They will, the enemy will do something wrong and twist it like you've done it wrong. You heard that lady's testimony yesterday. She said she was at court. She almost believed the lie. Meanwhile, she, she, she's not guilty. But the enemy tries to make you feel guilty. I rebuke every spirit of guilt this morning. I bind that guilt, that lie that makes you feel guilty when you shouldn't. God has acquitted you. The blood of Jesus has spoken for you. It is finished. That's it. And then the Lord bless you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. This is a word that I have for you this morning. For those of us listening online, I want you to know that you've been acquitted by Jesus. You're free in the name of Jesus Christ. You're no longer guilty. Whilst you were out in the world, yes, we're all guilty. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We were all sinners. Me preaching, me speaking, every one of us were sinners. Whilst we were in that sin, Christ died for us. And so I'm saying to you this morning, if you're listening to me, quit feeling guilty. You've got to resist and just cast out that spirit of guilt. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We rebuke that spirit of guilt. You're not a good wife. You're not a good husband. You're not a good friend. You're not a good minister. You're not a good pastor. You're not a good leader. You're not a good business person. You're not good in your job. You're not a good manager. You're not a good worker. You're not a good... That is the voice of Satan. We rebuke it this morning in Jesus' mighty name. You're not a good mother. You're not a good father. We rebuke every negative voice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise. And so I pray for those listening to us online. 
I pray that if your heart is troubled, that the Lord will bring calm. And I want you to recognize that he's your refuge and your fortress, your God. Trust him and he will deliver you. In Jesus' name, I cover your heart with the blood of Jesus. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, Jesus is our refuge. Jesus is our strength. If you need strength, you need Jesus. If you need a place of cover, you need Jesus. And this morning, I present Jesus to you. Will you come and make him the Lord of your life? Accept him as your own personal Lord and Savior. And as you do that, will you confess after me? That Lord Jesus, speak it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I repent of my sins. I repent of my ways. I repent of my thoughts. I didn't know that you could be a strength for me. I've been running this race of life by myself thinking I can help myself, but my strength has failed. Will you help me? Will you come into my heart, Jesus? Come into my life and be the Lord of my life. Let your strength be my strength. Be my place of refuge from today forward and forevermore. Today, I give my heart to you, Jesus. And I ask you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. I invite you from today. You are my personal Savior. And thank you for receiving me as your own. Will you give me your Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, come into my heart and teach me the ways of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all. That's all it takes. Praise the Lord. Nobody's going to ask you to, to fast for 40 days before you get born again. No, 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 no. You just pray the prayer of salvation. And there you are. Congratulations to you. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. And thank you for listening to us time and time again. May the Lord bless you. If we don't meet on this side of eternity, we will meet on the other side. May the Lord bless you. You know, for those of you who are listening to me, that you emailed me, that you listen from India, and your families also listen, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord continue to keep you. And like I said, if we don't meet here, we will meet on the other side. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen.